Coming up, forest fires continue to burn tonight across the region. Dedicated to eastern and southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News at 11. Good evening, I'm Steve Hensley. There is still a state of emergency in Estill County tonight as crews work to contain one of the two wildfires that began burning this week and two of many that have burned across the mountains. WYMT's Grayson Passmore has more from a homeowner who says the flames stopped burning just feet from his house. Just when people finally thought their homes were safe from the encroaching flames, many of them came back down the mountain just hours later, telling us the flames were rising again up to their shoulders, smoke billowing out. It looks like it's going to be another long night for these crews. I was up all night and watched it come down the mountain. After getting his daughter somewhere safe, Travis Cassidy and his wife Stephanie went back to their home late Tuesday night as they watched the fire start to burn through Ravenna. I just wanted to see where it was at and see what the status was and see how it was moving because we can't really see nothing. We could just see the fire. We just didn't know how far it was up there. So as the orange flames burned towards Cassidy's home, he sent his drone up to see how long they had worried he and his wife would need to escape. The thoughts I very, very proud of, you know, like the firefighters and everything, because I mean, they they've done a heck of a job and they've been, you know, if it wasn't for them, I'm, there ain't no telling where I'd be at right now. Crews worked through the night to keep the fire at bay, eventually extinguishing the flames, the tree line mere feet from Cassidy's home. I mean, two years ago we were dealing with the flood and now we're dealing with this. So, but it's one of the things you got to I mean, we take stuff for granted anymore. In Estill County, Grayson Passmore, WKYT. Now, crews are still working to contain the Chamberlain fire. EMA officials say the Pitts fire was 100% contained after burning 635 acres. Well, we have seen fires all across the region today. The Kentucky Division of Forestry says nearly 1,000 acres has burned in Breathitt County, creating heavy smoke across that county. And they have seen the fires get near some homes on Highway 1278. Thomas Smith with the Forestry Service says they have been doing a few things to try and prevent the fire from getting too close to homes. We do structure protection, that's what we call it. It's basically just blowing the leaves out around the outbuildings. And uh, we have uh, 200 gallons of water in my truck back there, which that don't go real far, but you know, we can spray some. Several counties are under burn bans, but officials are urging everyone to avoid doing it until we get some decent rain. A red flag warning was in effect for most of the day. During red flag warnings and burn bans, people are asked really not to burn at all, saying fires can spread so quickly if we are not careful. The good thing about when you get behind a cold front, the wind will start to die down. And once those temperatures die down a little bit, it kind of stabilizes the dew points and the humidity levels to make it less likely for fires if they get going to spread quickly. Firefighters we talked with today say leaves on the ground create more fuel for those fires. And another one to the list we were talking about uh, on Facebook Live earlier. If you joined us for that, I, I was actually, uh, uh, we received a call from our evening producer, Jennifer. She was on her way home in Knott County and saw a fire running through the eastern parts of Perry County. This was in Jeff about three and a half hours ago, right before you get to the Jeff Mart. If you're headed south on Highway 15, pretty extensive couple areas of fire there. It was getting close to homes at times. The good news, we know crews have been out on that fire. We have not heard anything else on that fire, and this may be one of those situations. No news is good news. We haven't heard of any structural damage from that, but it was a certainly a scary scene a little bit earlier. A lot of smoke. You can even smell the smoke in our studio right now here in Hazard. UVA Wise camera, almost quiet across southwest Virginia. 50 is the reading there, and there's where we were watching some of those fires a little bit earlier. The good news, we don't see any smoke plumes now either as we look in that high resolution mode. Still some areas in the 60s, but notice hazards in the 50s and some spots already in the 40s this evening. Those dew points are coming up. They're getting a little closer together. That means we're going to lower that fire danger into the overnight. The fire weather alert was allowed to expire at 6, but we are still seeing those issues tonight.
tonight. Details coming up on when perhaps a good soaking rain puts this to bed for good. That's coming up in a few minutes. Steve. All right, we certainly need the rain. Thank you, Evan. When Letcher County native Cordelia Collins Schauber heard about the flood that ravaged eastern Kentucky, she and some friends knew they had to help. Schauber has been traveling from her home in northern Kentucky to her home county every week since the flood. Schauber has partnered with her church to bring donations and muck out houses. Well, I can tell you that when I hit Jackson on my way down here, I start crying then. And uh, this, this hurts, this rips my heart out. Northern Kentucky is where I live and have wonderful neighbors, but um, this will always be my home. Schauber is also one of the founders of the nonprofit Martha, Mary, and Me, which helps impoverished girls access education. Schauber has dedicated an arm of the nonprofit to flood relief, naming it Save His Sheep. Following July's flood, primary care centers of Eastern Kentucky and the Kentucky Primary Care Association came together to create a flood relief grant to help flood victims receive household appliances. Now PCCK is looking for more support to help continue this mission. Those with primary care met with representatives from KPCA and SOAR to discuss the need that is still out there and possible ways they can receive funding. Primary care has been able to provide household appliances to 160 applicants, but there are still 300 applicants waiting. To give them that little bit of, you know, positivity and it's every, every one of them that, that I've been able to to speak with personally, you know, they're just like, this is such a burden lifted off of us. You just, they're very, very appreciative. Primary Care's Disaster Relief Fund runs solely off donations. To learn more about how you can help in these efforts, you can visit our website at WIMT.com. Shaping our Appalachian region is working to provide resources to the young minds of Appalachia with a fund to help flood impacted students replace needed items and a program to offer resources about entrepreneurship to students, SOAR is focused on the future. The entrepreneurship program is the latest effort, hoping to give students a blueprint for success. We were created to provide a blueprint for the region and to build consensus around that blueprint. So we're deploying uh, that information into communities and empowering the communities to take that in uh, and to really establish entrepreneurship as a pathway. You can find more information about the Flood Relief Fund and the Entrepreneurship Program on our website.